Hello everyone. Welcome to today's lecture. In this lecture, we are going to see the effect of stretching sulfate on voluntary muscle. So, in what manner stretching produces its mechanism of action? What is the use of stretching as a pharmaceutical preparation or as a pharmacological agent? What does it produce when we add a stretching? As well as we are going to see whether stitchinin is having any pharmacological action or not. If it has an any pharmacological action, then what is it? Or if it doesn't have any pharmacological action, then why it is not used as a pharmacological agent? Why doesn't it have any, any therapeutic use? So these points we are going to see in with the help of MSBT CD. And the title is to study and observe the effect of stitching sulfate on voluntary muscle. So let's start with our today's practical. So let's start with our today's experiment. The aim of the experiment is. Aim of this experiment is to study the effect of non-metallic environmental toxicants like stitching on frog. So this is the title of our today's practical today's experiment to see the effect of non-metallic environmental. Now we are going to see what is the effect of some metallic and non-metallic poisons. When these metals, non-metals are creating some poisonous effect on our body, they produce some undesirable effect. So how could you prove that these drugs are having some toxins, these drugs are producing some toxic effects, these drugs are not having a good effect. So to prove this or to find out the exact mechanism, here we are going to see, we select one drug that is on a stichinin. So stichinin is an, one of the non-metallic uh, poison and uh, because of it, there are some conditions which it produces. So let's see in what manner it does produce action. So what is the aim of our, uh, what is the object of our today's experiment? Objectives of this experiment are to identify the neurons involved in response cycle, to understand selective blockade caused by strychnine, to correlate inhibition of stretch response with DNS stimulation, to learn the physiology of stretch reflex. Exactly. So everyone should have one mechanism that is the response mechanism. So whenever there is a response mechanism, response mechanism means whenever we have any, whenever we have exposed to any extreme thing like in a cold, hot or uh, any irritation. So if we have any type of irritation, immediately we are responding. So this response is by a defense mechanism in our body. How it produces its action, why it is required is the first thing. Second one is to understand the selective blockage caused by the stitchinin. Whenever stitchinin is produced its action, it blocks some parameters, it blocks some pathway. So first initially we will going to see what is the response cycle and in that response cycle, which are the pathways that is get conducted by the body for the defense mechanism. And when we had a stitching, then at that time, how the stitching produces its mechanism by blocking some specific pathways. That is the second objective. Third objective is correlate the inhibition of stress response with CNA stimulation. We need to correlate with each other that is CNA stimulation and uh, stress response are correlated in what manner with the help of stitching. And last one is to understand the physiology of stress reflux that is one of the very important thing physiology so whenever there is a physiology that means by a normal mechanism in what manner what are the pathways and how they are involved for the refluxes stress refluxes that we are going to see so this is what about about today's objective next one is that so for conducting of this experiment, definitely there are some requirements. So what are these requirements? Here we use an animal is in a frog. For this experiment, we use an animal that is in a frog. So for conducting experiment on animal, we use some chemicals like stitching sulfate, glacial acetic acid. Again, we need to report here. Stitching sulfate is using 
by intraperitoneal route of administration and what could be its dose its dose is near about 2 to 4 mg per kg body weight as per that we are administering stitching sulfate intraperitoneally and another chemical that we are going to use that is the glacial acetic acid so this glacial acetic acid is an another irritant chemical for the responses in stimulating some responses that is an glacial acetic acid apart from this some of the equipments we could prefer that is nothing but stand with cramp some syringe needles as well as beaker so these are the sufficient instrument that we could use prefer now let's see what is the basic physiology and what is the basic theory behind this experiment reflex action means an instantaneous protective response of nervous system to a stimulus reflex action is an inevitable function of spinal cord the simplest reflex arc involves a sensory neuron a connector neuron a motor neuron and an interneuron spinal nerve carry the nerve impulses from the spinal cord to groups of voluntary muscle fibers yeah so this is another very wonderful diagram which gives exactly information about the reflex action so what is that reflex action here in this video we can see, see here uh, particularly if you see here there is a sensory receptor here this is one stimulation it stimulates something when it stimulates something it comes in this pathway it comes in pathway so some light is get blinking some light is get blinking when this light is get blinking that nerves are keep passing on when the light is get blinking the nerves are get passing on and when the nerves are get passing on it carries information so this is the first one this we called as that is the sensory receptor second when it carries through the sensory neuron this is the sensory neuron it carries then act this is the actual pathway here this is an actual path or this is the actual middle area that we called as some other responses uh, this is a sensory receptor and it carries information here and this information is carried with the help of nerve that is called as a sensory neuron so this blue color line blue color this part is that is called as a sensory neuron after that sensory neuron here in between this orange color this uh, sorry this brown color this brown color is called as an interneuron this is an interneuron this interneuron interneuron these are this is one neuron this is another neuron so between these two this is one this is second between these two that is called as inter between the two called as the inter so that is an inter neuron so this inter neuron and this inter neuron carries collect the information from the sensory neuron and convey to the next motor neuron so whenever this information is get collected it case passes it produces some mechanism what it produces mechanism see here is a stimulation yes this is a stimulation then again the nerve carries information it gets passed to the next and here one effect is shown that we call as what this is as an effect so this is the pathway this is the pathway by which by which we carry the impulse and we respond something so whenever there is stimulation here we in this sensory receptor that we call as here this sensory receptor we call as a stimulation whenever we have a stimulation with this stimulation some impulses are get carried out these impulses decide what to do and then it produces action that we call as effect so what this what is mean by reflux action reflux action means an instantaneous it's an instantaneous and most important thing is an protective response of the nervous system why we are giving that response for example we may have a needle when we have a needle and if someone unknowingly if someone just prick on your finger what you are immediately you prick it down. why because it's an protection or sometimes if you see there is one beaker is there or there is some glass is there in that glass so there is very hot water is there hot some so liquid is there and you don't know that liquid is very hot in there and it's you just unknowingly you go there and you just touch to that glass and when you got 
that there is a very hot substance is present in the trust immediately you bring immediately you detaches that is called as what instantaneous response there is no need to think on it there is no need to think on it whether it is damaging something or whether it is hazardous for me or whether it's an anything need or whether it's an a pleasurable moment no whenever we use such type of incidences immediately we use instantaneous response no need to think brain there is no involvement of brain here immediately it took some so that response is for the protective mechanism that response is made by the protective mechanism and this is get produced by this is get produced by our nervous system that we call as a reflux action and this reflux action is an inviolable function of a spinal cord it's one of the very important vital function of this spinal cord and in this uh, particularly arc in this particular response few of the neurons get in few of the neurons get in the neurons are like those that is called as a sensory neuron just like that whole new ear is in a sensory neuron it collect the information see some light is get blinking that is nothing but it's a role of the sensory neuron it collect the information that is in a sensory neuron second one is that that is called as a collector that is called as collector neuron this is a connector neuron it connect this two it connect the two that is a connector neuron and third one that is called as a motor neuron that is called as motor neuron that is this is the red color which is near to the effect cell that is called as a motor neuron as well as between these two nerve one more neuron is present that is called as an inter neuron so already we had no already we know about what do you mean by the motor neuron what do you mean by sensory neuron but again once we could see that what is mean by motor neuron motor neuron is a neuron that innervates some muscle tissues that are connected to the muscles tissues as well as a neuron that carries the impulses irritating for the muscle contraction which carries the information for contracting of the muscle that we call as a motor neuron that is a motor neuron second one information that is not, nothing uh, no to know about that is a inter neuron inter neuron means a neuron is located between the neurons inter it's a name itself indicate inter that is in between between neurons in a chain of the neuron there is one chain of the neuron sensory neuron motor neuron is a chain so in that chain one middle between one neuron is present that we call as an inter neuron so apart from this there are few more some information is available just try to collect this information is you can, you can see, see here, here sensory receptor responds to a stimulus with a pin and has generated impulses these impulses conducted by sensory neuron to integrating center in the spinal cord integrating center in brain and spinal cord relay impulses to motor neuron motor neuron in turn conduct impulse to the effector cell such as muscle cell which will respond to the stimulus that is contraction of muscle so this is what the some of the information related to the uh, this reflux are now we are going for the next slide is when the arc involving sensory neuron connector neuron motor neuron is completed acetylcholine is released at the neuromuscular junction as a result contraction of a group of voluntary muscle fibers occurs at the same time another arc is completed in between the sensory neuron interneuron and motor neuron as a result relaxation of antagonistic muscle occurs due to action of glycin on interneuron within the spinal cord glycin is a inhibitory neurotransmitter of spinal cord yes uh, this is the most interesting topic this is the most interesting concept theory in this practical in this uh, topic so let's see what is that so that's i initially discuss with you what are the different parameters what are the different things that are get involved in a reflex and in what manner it produces its action let's see so when the arc involved when the arc involved sensory neurons 
connector neuron and motor neuron then it's called there is a release of some neurotransmitter and that neurotransmitter we call it an acetylcholine where does it release it releases at neuromuscular junction neuro uh, muscular muscle junction then, so here in this point a very interesting arc is get complete in this point we are going to see in what manner this uh, responses are produces it's a very interesting concept it's a very interesting so here are a few just as we discussed in earlier slide there are few nerves that is sensory neuron motor neuron connector neuron and interneuron so these four neurons are arranged in a such a manner that it produces some action when different when pathway is coming that at the time when pathway is coming means when one pathway is coming some three response some three neurons are getting for another type of reaction another type of response some another three neurons are get involved in that two neurons are very common one is sensory neuron and motor neuron remaining a middle one connector neuron or interneuron is get bad and due to the change in connector neuron or due to the change in interneuron their physiological responses get change so today we are going to discuss here in what manner it produces its action so let's see when arc involve when arc involve sensory neuron connector neuron and motor neuron when these three neurons are get involved at that time one neurotransmitter is get release at a neuromuscular junction a word is neuromuscular junction a junction a connection where neuron and muscle circuit are so what type of neuron here are the neuron that is a somatic nerve and muscle that is an a skeletal muscle so when this skeletal muscle and nerve is get connect with each other a junction that we call it na neuromuscular junction and at that point a neurotransmitter release that we call as acetylcholine and everyone knows acetylcholine is having a action on skeletal muscle that is a contraction so what is the aim the end of the result is that is a contraction of the muscle fiber why because whenever acetylcholine comes in contact with skeletal muscle it has to produce one mechanism that we call as a contraction there is one path there is one arc where three neurons are get involved what are the name first one is the sensory neuron in between middle is connector neuron and last one is a motor another arc is there that we call as in that arc sensory neuron interneuron and motor neuron are get involved sensory neuron here now middle neuron is get changed interneuron and motor neuron and due to completion of this due to completion of this arc it produces a relaxation of antagonistic muscle now what do you mean by the antagonistic muscle let's see here one beautiful explanation is here about the antagonistic muscle antagonistic muscle is an a, a muscle which counteract the action of something antagonist opposite means if we have a contraction then the contraction opposite to the contraction is an a relaxation so it's a normal phase it's not a normal phase contraction is not a normal phase what is a contra what is a normal phase it's a relaxation is normal phase so whenever we went in a contraction phase after certain period of time it is a must that it should get release and it should get converted into the another phase that we call as a no? relaxation phase so who will produce this relaxation this relaxation is get produced by one or that arc is called as sensory neuron interneuron motor neuron there is one beautiful keyword for here for you remember us that is a sim there is one word that is kulja sim sim a sim sim that is the sim involved sensory neuron i in there is nothing but interneuron and m is nothing but the motor neuron so sim so keep it remember sim opposite to sim there is a sensory neuron connector neuron and motor neuron so here sim is very important for the opening of the muscle when the Mm, muscles are in contract phase that we call as a closed phase, and when the muscles are in relaxed phase that we call as an open phase. So this second arc involves for the relaxation of this 
antagonistic muscle that is nothing but relaxation but whenever there is a relaxation definitely as like whenever contraction of muscle is there we need one neurotransmitter there is an acetabulum in a same manner here again one neurotransmitter we need that is a glycine so glycine is a neurotransmitter which is responsible for the opening of the closed muscle that is required for the activity of antagonistic muscle so acetylcholine responsible for contraction of muscle and glycine is responsible for the relaxation of muscle so this is what about the two important neurotransmitters are get released when two important arcs are get completed so glycine is a inhibitory neurotransmitter of an spinal cord at spinal cord it work as an inhibitory neurotransmitter so this is what the specifically mechanism this is the most important thing if we know this immediately the next point that we are going to say it is very much clear if we don't have this this much clearance then again the confusion might be possible so let's see the next point strychnine is a selective and competitive antagonist of glycine therefore it blocks the postsynaptic inhibitory sites that is interneurons and blocks the relaxation of antagonistic muscles whereas activity of acetylcholine on voluntary muscles is continued thus excitatory effect is observed upon administration of strychnine it should be remembered that the cns stimulant effect of strychnine doesn't result from direct synaptic excitation but it is by selective blockade of inhibition yes so what we had seen in last slide this all is here demonstrated in this beautiful diagram so let us see what is this so this is a diagram which gives an information about this and the leg part that this leg part uh, we are going to demonstrate how this two arc is going to be complete here the stroke is given let's see yes this is an a stroke as the stroke is given one arc is get completed due to that muscle is get contract now this muscle is get contract and after the contraction immediately it get release it is get relaxed so that is what the instant response that we need an instant response so that is a bending upward and moving forward and again coming at its original position that is the why because of the completion of the two arcs sensory neuron connector neuron motor neuron sensory neuron interneuron and motor neuron so whenever these arcs are get completed it produces such type of effect so let's see what is this strychnine is a selective and competitive antagonist of the glycine this is the most mechanical important thing what is the strychnine strychnine is a selective and competitive selective means the same thing at the same position at the same spot that is a selectivity whatever he want the same thing that uh, that particular strychnine is required means the where the glycine get binds at the same point strychnine is get that we call as a selective competitive means comparable to glycine strychnine is very strong so whenever the glycine comes he detach from that side and go and it goes and get bind with that side that we call as a competitive antagonist it has a competitive what is a strychnine strychnine is a selective competitive antagonist of the glycine what happen when select when this strychnine goes bind with an glycine side it blocks post synaptic inhibitory site that is interneuron where this glycine is get released the glycine is get released at the end of the interneuron so as this interneuron see here in this diagram we can see here so this is what this is what the site where this glycine is get released this is the site where this glycine is get released this is the exactly site where this glycine is get released and due to this glycine due to this glycine then the next arc is get completed from here this next arc is get completed from here this ne next arc is get completed 
So this is the exactly mechanism when the glycine is get released. But what is the stitchnin? What the stitchnin does? Stitchnin goes and bind at this point. Goes and bind at this point. So as even though glycine is available, it does not allow to bind with the receptor. It does not allow to bind this receptor. Why? Because it's a selective and a competitive antagonist. As it get block, as it get block, this neuron definitely the next mechanism relaxation of antagonistic muscle is get relaxation of antagonistic muscle is get teased. It gets stopped. It won't happen. Relaxation means the muscle is remain as it is in contraction phase because contraction is produced by another mechanism. Contraction is get produced by one mechanism that we called as an sensory neuron connector neuron motor neuron release of acetylcholine and produces contraction and while for the relaxation another arc we need that is the sensory neuron interneuron and motor neuron and thus it produces what relaxation so that relaxation so that relaxation is important that relaxation is important when that relaxation is important whenever glycine is get released whenever glycine is get released that type of relaxation is released so what happened in this case when stitchnin we have administered stitchnin stitchnin goes and bind at glycine site glycine is not available as glycine is not available immediately that relaxation of antagonistic muscle is not possible it's not occurring as it is not occurring definitely another second second arc is still going on second arc is still going on that continuous release of acetylcholine is still going on the activity of acetylcholine is going on which results in muscle remain as it is in a contraction phase muscle remain as it is in contraction phase due to that due to that we could feel that due to stitching the muscle is in contracted due to that muscle is contracted but muscles not contracted because of the stitching muscle contracted because of the absence of glycine means so where is a, a one wonderful example one example that is a, we can see like this so uh, so door is there when the door is closed phase we can say in two ways we can say in two ways what door is closed and second sentence door is not open door is not open door is not open that is meaning what Door is closed. Door is closed. That is the door is closed. But when we could say that door is not open, that is meaning the same in the same manner. Muscle is contracted and muscles are not relaxed. Muscle is contracted because of acetylcholine. Muscle is not relaxed because of absence of glycine. Why glycine is not available? Because glycine is gate competitively antagonized by stitching. And due to that, we are not available glycine and glycine does not produce antagonistic muscle relaxation. This is the base mechanism. And this last sentence is one of the very important. What it says, it should be remembered that the CNS stimulant effect of stitching doesn't result from directly synaptic excitation, but it is by selective blockage of inhibition this is the most important thing. this is the most important thing. by direct synaptic excitation it is uh, selectively blocked by selectively block blocky blockation of selectively blocked by blocked of inhibition that is the most important thing that we could remember in this particularly slide this is one of the very important what we are what important thing that could we could remember in this slide is that is the most important thing is which type of uh, neurotransmitter release at what site second thing is which are complete and when which are type of are complete which type of mechanism of action one type of are complete one mechanism that is sensor neuron connector neuron motor neuron this is one arc sensor neuron inter neuron motor neuron is another arc when arc sensor neuron Connector neuron, motor neuron complete, one action is produced. That action is called as release of acetylcholine contraction. And second one, sensory neuron, interneuron, motor neuron, glycine is released. That we call as opening of muscle. That is 
fantastic effect that we were using sim pulja sim 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 that is open whatever it is get closed that it should get open that we call as sim so this is what the exact information about this. now the next experiment now the next slide is that we are going to discuss how exactly we have concluded this with uh, with an a practical use of animal so let's see that in what manner it produces its action was studying the effect of strychnine with the frog hold the frog on a stand with a clamp now dip one of the legs of the frog in glacial acetic acid and observe the stretching of the leg in upward direction since glacial acetic acid produces irritation and pain the frog gives response by stretching its leg inject 0.1 ml of strychnine sulfate solution intraperitoneally after 1 minute once again dip the leg of frog in glacial acetic acid and observe its response now observe the response you will notice that the movement of frog's leg is in upward direction remember for any movement alternate contraction and relaxation of voluntary muscle is a must repeat the same procedure after injecting 0.2 0.3 and 0.4 ml doses of strychnine sulfate solution at certain dose the frog doesn't show any movement of its leg this means that strychnine sulfate has stimulated the spinal cord by producing excitatory effect on voluntary muscles of abdomen and leg causing a state of permanent contraction therefore the frog has not responded to glacial acetic acid hence strychnine sulfate is cns stimulant yes so what we have seen in this beautiful experiment in this beautiful demonstration that here we use an animal that we called as a frog so with the help of frog we are trying to prove that how the strychnine is a selective and competitively blockage of the glycin due to blockage of the glycin this muscle circuit permanently and a contraction effect why does it produce such type of effect let's see so initially we hold this animal in a stand with the help of clamp then next we had seen that uh, for getting irritation we use one chemical that chemical name is that chemical name is glacial acetic acid that chemical name is glacial acetic acid see this is here we can see so we can see that this is what the leg of frog glacial acetic yes this is in a glacial acetic acid so when we use this glacial acetic acid what type of effect this or what actually this frog is doing the frog is trying to push his legs that is nothing but one phase is there stretching of the leg stretching of the leg and contraction and relaxation of muscles so due to that it giving one contraction relaxation phase but why does it produces it is the because of it is the because of one irritant substance that we call as the glacial acetic acid after that after that we have administered one drug that we call as strychnine sulfate so when we inject the strychnine sulfate when we inject the strychnine sulfate where we inject is in a specific position if you see here uh, uh, what is the exactly mechanism or uh, what is the exactly 
root of administration it's an intraperitoneal just below the peritoneum we have administered this tissue with the help of the syringe we could apply it so this intraperitoneal once it is get apply intraperitoneally then we could see the effect next what is the effect after certain treatment so this glycylacetic acid again we are trying to expose the leg so in that in this experiment what we do we are given one leg we expose one leg to the glycylacetic what happened when we expose this glycylacetic acid to one leg that specific leg is getting contraction phase and second one is as it is remain in relaxed phase but the leg which have we have exposed where we dip this leg in a glycylacetic acid immediately it get contract immediately it get contract why it is get contract because of the irritation and after that we could see that after period of certain period of time for a certain period of a time this leg is a contraction and slowly they goes for the why it is because specifically specifically the muscle is get contracted due to the irritation by the glycylacetic acid but as we have given stitchin sulfate the glycine is not available glycine is not available so it remain as it is in a contraction phase but why it is get slowly relax that is nothing but that is not actually relaxation it is get release it get pull down due to the gravitational force because we hold the frog as it is and due to holding a frog as it is its leg is slowly started for relaxing releasing due to the it is get pulling out due to the gravitational force it is not a relaxation force it is the most important thing is that for any type of movement or for any type of action we should for particularly for skeletal muscle we should have alternate contraction and relaxation phase we should have an alternate contraction and relaxation particularly for voluntary type of muscle if we have such type of uh, if we have such type of movement then and then only we could conduct the next experiment we could conduct this experiment so this is the first thing that we could remember relaxation Relay, legs are in actually in contract phase but due to the gravitation it is get again we given a next dose of the stitchin sulfate as we have given the next day dose of the stitchin sulfate let's see what it does little bit higher dose but we given 0.2 now again we expose the leg for the glycylacetic acid but in this case the leg doesn't produce any action why because stitching was already glycine is get blocked and second thing is that glycine is not available for the relaxation and second is that he already the muscles are in contraction phase as the muscles are already in contraction phase it does not releases its next action because the, the condition is that for the movement of the voluntary muscle it is a compulsory it is a must that the muscle should have both phases one is called as relaxation another is called as contraction so in that the leg is in contraction phase another phase is not opened that's why there is no any action because already it is in a contraction phase but then we could say that this stitchin sulfate produces effect through the spinal cord by producing the excitatory effect on a muscle uh, excitatory effect of the voluntary muscles and particularly this leg causing a state of permanent contraction phase that is a permanent contraction phase and that we can conclude that this stitchin sulfate is a cns stimulant because of the central nervous system uh, it is related to the uh, effect it produces its action as an cns stimulant so this is what about our today's particularly experiment now the next point is that one of the very important thing is this so what is the 
observation table. So this is the most important thing in observation table. Let's see. Initially, initially what we had is, see, initially what we had is with this treatment, particularly only we are exposed to the glass. Only we are exposed to the glass. So in this observation table, we can see how stitch length produces its mechanism. So at serial number one, we could see that there is only exposure of glassing, glassing acetic acid. What it what it has an action? It produces only in stitching of the leg. Only it produces stitching of the leg. Second time, we have given stitching in surface of a quantity zero point one ml. We have given zero point one ml. So when we have given zero point one ml of stitching in and when we have exposed the, the glass and acetic acid the stitching stretching of the leg in upward direction but slowly relaxation because of the only 0 0.1 when we have increased the dose from 0 0.1 to now we have increased to the 0 0.2 ml now it is a 0 0.2 ml with the help of 0 0.2 ml again Again, there is a little bit decrease in that. Again, there is a little bit decrease in it. That is still slow. Next, after 0 0.3 ml, at 0 0.3 ml, what we can see that further there is a decrease in a leg movement. Further there is a decrease in a leg movement. And with 0 0.4 ml, with 0 0.4 ml, there is no leg movement. There is a no leg movement. The stitching inhibited relaxation permanently. There is no leg movement because we have given very high dose 0.4 ml. So due to that, there is a permanent contraction of the voluntary muscle. So this is observation table. This observation table is most important thing for the exam. So try to complete it and complete your uh, observation table also and conclusion in between behind in below the observation table. So this is the observation table that you need to complete it. So just look at your uh, try to look it here and complete it as much as possible with this record. And what is the conclusion? Therefore, from observation, it is concluded that stitching sulfate produces stimulation of spinal cord as well as it produces contraction of the voluntary muscle. So this is a conclusion. Remaining the questions behind these are very simple. You just try to find out the answer. If you doesn't find any, let me know. I am trying to clear you as much as so, and uh, the questions allocated by the teacher that will allocate you in a group. So, you just collect the information from there. So, this is what about the effect of non metallic toxins like stitching and its effect on a rock. So, what we had seen or what we learned from this experiment the name, the neurons involved. So what we have learned, just see. What you have learned to name the neurons involved in stimulus response cycle. To understand that stretch reflex is due to contraction and relaxation of alternate groups of voluntary muscles. To understand the state of permanent contraction. Stretching stimulates CNS by inhibiting inhibitory neurotransmitter glycine. Stretching is classified under CNS stimulant category. Stretching is a poisonous drug and never used in therapeutics. Any accidental consumption or deliberate administration of stretching is characterized by rigorous convulsions produced in the body if not treated in time, may cause death. Yes.
So near about seven different points we had learned in this experiment. First thing is that which different arcs are get involved for the responses, instantaneous responses, simple neuron, connector neuron, motor neuron, simple neuron, interneuron, and motor neuron. So this is the first that is the involvement of response cycle, different uh, nerves involved in the response. Second thing is to understand the stretch reflex, it is due to the contraction and relaxation of alternate contraction and alternate contraction and relaxation of voluntary muscle is required to check to understand this stretch reflex. That is the second point we had seen. Next, we had seen that how stitching is responsible for permanent type of contraction. How does it produce a permanent type of contraction? Definitely by blocking a glycine. Right? We how we are uh, representing a stitching. Stitching is a selective computative type of antagonist of a glycine. Glycine is required for the relaxation of antagonistic muscle, and here glycine is not available due to stitching, so it is in a permanent contraction. Next thing that we have seen that is a uh, because of its mechanism, stitching is get classified under CNS stimulant category. As stitching is a poisonous drug, it never used therapeutically. It's the most important thing. Stitching never used therapeutically. Why? Because stitching is a poisonous drug. Even though if anyone had a stitching accidentally, it produces contract. That we already seen. That is a convulsion surrogate produces rigorous convulsion surrogate in a body. And if it is not treated in time, then it could be a dangerous. That's why it is necessary to avoid this. Stichny never used therapeutically. So this is what about our today's experiment. So if you have anything, this is the end of the experiment. If you have anything, if you want to know something about this, let me know. I am trying to clear you as much as possible. So thanks for listening to me. Thank you.